So I drove 412 miles, spent seven hours in a car. I've now spent over 12 hours editing this short video, and all this happened six months ago. So the question is, was it worth it? Yes, but not for the reason you're probably thinking. We don't have these over in my side of the state. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll draw some fishing with my blood. Rainbow trout on the fly. On the Kistler bait finesse. Hey, so I've been on the road for two and a half hours. I got about another hour to go and I'm looking forward to fishing my first of these fabled limestone trout streams in Pennsylvania. Uh, and hopefully we'll catch some nice smallmouth and some maybe some wild brown trout. So car's full of gas, gotta hit the road. You see, back in September, I wanted to go fish with a handful of other knowledgeable bait finesse people. This was one of those trips, and in fact, none of these trips have seen the light of day because right after I finished doing all these trips in a short period of time, the hard drive on my computer crashed. And so I've spent hours, hours recovering as many files as I could, and I'm finally starting to, to get back to editing these trips. This ended up not being a great fishing trip. But it's what I learned before that last fish of the day that really changed the way I set up my bait finesse rods and reels. And so that's why I really wanted to share this video. Should we go upstream or downstream? What, what do you think? Is so, that's why I was just trying to figure out. Upstream looks like there's maybe a little bit more right off the bat, but I mean, there's a lot of structure, but that, that looks really shallow down through there. The deepest rods right there. Like everything I've looked at so far is shallow. You see, yeah. part of the fun of this is I was meeting up with Jimmy from Rar Fishing. And so it was it was a lot of fun to fish with him. And we got to talk a little bit about YouTube and doing work with, with other brands, which was kind of cool. You know, the fishing trip videos, they just don't do as well, but I still like to do them, even though they take more time to edit. And, and I agree that, you know, you have to portray some. Yeah. Not a lot. Yeah. And you don't even make the videos long as mine. Right? Well, it's funny because a, a lot of people say, hey, when are you doing a review on this? You know, I'm like, well, once I'm done, you know, I like, I have to use it for a while to do a review. Oh my gosh. Like, I, like, like I can do an unboxing, but I'm not going to tell you, like, I love it, go buy it yet. You know, it's exactly. just like, let's go fish exactly. it and like, see. Like a lot of these uh, companies, they, they want it right away because, you know, they launched the product, right? Yep. Well, it's like, well, you know what? I understand it's still new to some folks. You should give us the rod before you launch. A long, a longer period of time, and by the time you launch it, boom, we have a review yep. already, right? Yep. You know, and we also managed to catch a handful of fish along the way, but it, it wasn't the epic day that I think we were hoping for. I, I agree. There hey, there you go. But I did manage to catch a new species, so that was cool. I think I caught my first fall fish. We don't have these over in my side of the state. There we go, new species, fall fish. Hoping maybe you had one of those wild browns. I was hoping too, that's why I pulled out the net. Yeah, I'm definitely uh should have should have picked up the trout box instead of the bass box. So you're more of a bass guy, huh? Well this time of year I'm definitely thinking about bass. I mean it's I think about 
called brown trout. May and October, man, that's, oh, there was a hit. Those are, those are your months for catching the big ones. It's getting deeper over here too. I'm trying to figure out what I'm gonna do. artificial whether it's fly or spinning but no bait finesse come on pa bait finesse for the win but um that way i see some rapids and stuff but i don't remember which section there's eventually there's a section that's fly fishing only i was down that or then eventually going that way okay i i just don't remember i don't I, I don't know at all so yeah this section is a uh, well but they should have signs so yeah right right well, let's go up that way then. It might be a hike though. <clears throat> That's okay. I'm, last spot if it, if it's going towards that. I'm okay with that. Right. I mean, there's days I put a ton of miles in on the, you know, because especially when I'm fishing a new place too, uh -huh. like you just don't know, uh, yeah, we, you know. So, how, how involved were you uh, with designing the rod? Like, are you picking parts? Are you rolling blanks down and testing stuff? No. So I'm, I'm, I basically did a ton of the the specifications. Uh -huh. So I told them the performance specs that I wanted out of it. Uh -huh. Uh, I gave them the, the approximate guide spacing, um, handle dimensions, uh, you know, basic performance characteristics, and then they would <clears throat> send me a product to test, and then I'd give them feedback. And you know, I, I wasn't wasn't actually building the rods with them or anything, but morning. How are you today? Good. Yep, we're just going around. You mind if we cast up on this left side a little bit? Okay, thank you. I haven't seen or felt anything yet. I wish I would have seen this trail when we were sitting, but I was looking more at the water. And right. Yeah, looks like people are using it, though. Yeah. That's, well, because, you know, as I was coming back through, I saw this little path. Okay. And I'm like, boy, that's a tough path, but it's definitely people are walking it. Mm -hmm. So so I came through the underbrush, and I got out here. I'm like, oh, my gosh, this is, Perfect. like, I wish somebody would have said something. I think that's a trout. No, nope, it's probably a fall fish. It's a fall fish. Oh no, it's a brown trout. But as I was taking him off, I embedded the hook in my finger and, and I'm bleeding a little bit. So it was a stock brown, it wasn't a wild. Gill cover and a clip fin. Yeah, we can wait up. I'm gonna switch, I'm gonna switch lures real quick. So you know, after driving halfway across the state of Pennsylvania and back in the same day and fishing for, I don't know, five or six hours, it, it was a long day. I, I was really hopeful that we would catch, you know, some amazing fish. So, you know, when you've been throwing lures that are like three, four, five grams, and you decide to switch to a three quarter of a gram fly, it takes a while to dial in 
down to three, you know, down to below one gram, especially when you've been casting heavier lures. You know, it didn't take that long really, but after I caught the fish, that's when I made the realization. Here's that rainbow trout because it was a pretty nice fish. Uh, maybe I'll maybe I'll draw some fish in with my blood. I have decided to throw on this fly. My buddy Caleb tied for me. Gotta get nice and wet here. Caleb, I had a hit on that fly. There we go, rainbow trout. <laughs> That's a beautiful fish. Nice rainbow trout. I'm on the fly, on the Kistler hunt, bait finesse. There he is. Rainbow trout on the fly. On the Kistler bait finesse. Definitely taking some dialing in with the reel. Never used this reel for this light of lures before. Now here's the thing. I didn't realize it at the time, but throughout the fall, I never adjusted that reel again. And through the rest of the day, I was able to, to switch between throwing that fly, throwing uh, you know, a, a three, three and a half gram spinner bait, or even throwing a, a five gram Dynamic Lures HD trout sinking, you know, suspending minnow. I never adjusted the brakes, but what I was getting, I was getting this insane distance out of my standard lures, you know, three grams, four grams, five grams. It's interesting, those first couple holes seem to have a lot more fish than I've seen anywhere else. Okay. Nope. I'm starting to feel like the bite's done. It's like the water's near 70 year lows. So it's usually a good bit higher than this, which would make the fishing a little bit easier as well, you know? I had one on the first cast. Yeah. I had him hooked up, but he, he, he got off real fast. It was a rainbow. Nice and colored up, too. 
So the fish in places like this, they've seen everything, you know? And it just, I mean, it's, it's not bad. I mean, you'll, you catch some, we caught some today, but. I kind of feel like you get one or two chances at them and then after that they're like, nope. So ever since then, I've started changing the way I dial in my bait finesse reels. And this seems to work especially well for reels that have active braking systems. So like the Shimano's and the Daiwa's. The stuff that has a little bit more linear braking system like a Magtrack style, you know, something where the rotor or the, where the magnet is not moving during the cast, that doesn't seem to work as much or as well. But if you dial in the reel for the minimum weight you're gonna throw. For the most part, it seems like it handles everything else just fine. And you get more distance out of those other things. Now that's been my experience and I'm gonna keep testing it. But I just wanted to share that uh, because while the fishing wasn't great, it was still a great time, right? And to me, any day fishing beats a day working, right? I would much rather be out on a stream fighting tough conditions with a fellow fisherman than be sitting in an office and fighting over corporate policy or something like that. This has been fun. Nice to get out here. Oh, hey, I've had plenty of times where I didn't catch anything. So catch four, four different species too, actually. So that was cool. Two little hits down there in that first section. Oh yeah, I caught a small fish and I saw that. Yep. Yeah. 